easily the biggest issue for the Raiders over the past five to six years has been their inability to draft. Uh, in fact, most Raider fans just assume the Raiders are going to blow the draft. Most Raider fans just assume that the Raiders are going to end up reaching and not getting an actual good football player. Uh, but I'm here to tell you guys that I think it's going to be a little bit different this time around because we have a different regime. Uh, we have the Dave Ziegler, Josh McDaniels regime. Uh, I understand some people might not like Josh McDaniels as a coach, but Dave Ziegler as an evaluator, we're going to find out this year if he has what it takes to actually build a good roster. Uh, with that being said, uh, I do want to do a mock draft simulator today. Uh, we're going to do a seven round mock draft simulator. Uh, we won't have any trades in the mock draft simulator. It's very hard to predict. Uh, some people are saying the Raiders may swap with the Cardinals for pick three, depending on the quarterback. Um, but let's go ahead and get right into this. Uh, we're going to start this simulator. You guys can see the first six picks. Uh, Bryce Young goes one. CJ Stroud goes two. Will Anderson goes three. Anthony Richardson goes four. Tyree Wilson goes five and Jalen Carter goes six. Um, this is probably the worst case scenario for the Raiders right here. Uh, in my opinion, the top three quarterbacks are gone and the top three players are gone, right? Non-quarterbacks. Uh, worst case scenario for the Raiders. Now, the best case scenario for the Raiders would be that uh, aside from the three quarterbacks that already got taken, one more quarterback goes up there and if a team were to take a quarterback it would be the seahawks or the lions both teams could possibly take one of the quarterbacks now if will levis is on the board at pick seven a lot of people are going to say let's take him uh let's get this guy that could potentially be a game changer for the raiders if he ends up panning out but he's also the type of quarterback that if you if he busts out with pick seven uh, with the talent that's on the board right now, I, I think the Raiders would set themselves back mo many, many, many years, right? Um, for me, Will Levis is not a quarterback I would take at this pick. Uh, if any of the other three quarterbacks were here, I would take them. Uh, I just don't think Will Levis has it. So we're not taking a quarterback with pick seven. Um, in the past, I would have said the Raiders should take Christian Gonzalez, cornerback out of Oregon. And I'd still be for it. I'd still be 100% for taking Christian Gonzalez. I'd be 100% for taking Devin Witherspoon with this pick, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to go based off of a position that we've been missing for a long time. Um, I'm going to take defensive tackle Kalijah Kansi out of Pittsburgh with pick seven. Uh, and we'll talk about this a little bit uh, as to why, if I'm the Raiders, I'm taking Kalijah Kansi. Uh, first and foremost, this class at the cornerback position is super deep, and I don't think the first or second cornerbacks that will go off the board are guaranteed to be the best cornerbacks. I think there's about seven to eight corners that you can get in this class that'll be good productive football players. But again, there's no actual cornerback like Sauce Gardner in this class or Derek Stingley in this class, right? There's no Jalen Ramsey in this class, right? The two rookie cornerbacks last year were guaranteed to be good football players. That's not the case with the corners in this class. I think in this class, you're kind of taking a guy that, you know, you hope he translates into the NFL, but it's not guaranteed. And I'm not saying every player is guaranteed, obviously, um, but I just would not take a corner with pick seven. Again, I wouldn't be upset if Dave Ziegler and Josh Daniels felt that Patrick Graham can develop these guys. Uh, but for me, you take a guy in Kalija Kansi, and when you look at a guy like Kalija Kansi, you're getting a whole lot from this guy now he is 6'1 right officially um 281 pounds uh, according to his nfl uh, draft combine numbers um but to me what sold me on Kansi is his pass rushing ability when you guys watch this tape the guy is is top tier he's he's different he's a pass rusher he gets after the quarterback um does he need to get better at uh run uh, uh, defending the run yeah absolutely he does but it's not so bad that he's you know, one of those guys that can't play the run at all. Uh, I think if you put him in, right, at, at the three technique, the four eye, even the five technique, uh, the guy's going to be very, very, very disruptive. Plus, you don't get those double teams with the centers and guards as often if you line them up a little bit out to the outside. Um, and here's another thing, you know, I've seen some people break down his tape. And one of the things that these people do is they'll take like one or two clips from multiple games, right? Like they'll watch like five, six different games. They'll take one or two clips and they'll say, this guy can't defend the run, but they will selectively edit out the plays in which he does blow up the run, 
right? Um, but I think one of the biggest things for the Raiders on defense is we don't have a good pass rushing defensive line. Like last year, I think we were like the third worst team in terms of sacks. Um, you can't have that when your defense ends are getting paid all that money. And the big issue right now with the Raiders is they don't have any interior pass rush. So for me, the Raiders got to get better. And I think Kalijah Kansi is going to end up going in the top 14 picks regardless. And I know some people are going to say, why well, take him with the seventh overall pick? Um, you know, to me, where you if you get a guy with the seventh overall pick versus trade back and try waiting to see if the guy will be there with pick 15, it's not worth it if you think he's worth pick seven. You take him right then and there. To me, Clash Kansi is one of the best players in this class. Um, you can make the argument, right, that Kalijah Kansi could become better than Jalen Carter. Like, you could make that argument. And I'm not saying he's better, right? I think Jalen Carter's a really, really, really special player. But uh, there's a chance that Kalijah Kansi ends up being the better D-tackle. Um, and don't get me wrong, right? They can both be great football players. I just think Kansi is one of those guys that's just absolutely different. Um, pass rush, to me, is the, is the one thing that I look for with defensive linemen. And Kansi has it. And I don't think he's one of those guys that's like, you know, he's he's not he's not a guy that's like an average pass rusher. The guy's an elite pass rusher. He's going to come into the NFL and he will be right after Aaron Donald, the second best pass rusher from a technique perspective, right? The way he uses his hands, the way he moves his body, uh, he'll be one of the best pass rushers. So I think the Raiders should take him. Uh, again, you can always line him up as a three tech, four eye, five technique, right? Don't put him to the inside. Um, so I'm taking him right then and there, pick 38. Let's get into it. Um, you know, I thought about the Raiders possibly taking a cornerback. Uh, there's some good corners right now that are available. You got Emmanuel Forbes, Mississippi State. Some people say he can be a first round pick. Um, you got some other guys as well. Um, you got the Miami cor corner as well right there. Um, you can even arguably take a quarterback. Now, obviously in this instance, Hendon Hooker is available with pick 38. Uh, to me, that's that's an interesting pick. Like, I would absolutely consider handed hook or pick 38. Um, but I think that would be a mistake for the Raiders solely based off of the way our team is constructed. We don't have depth. We don't have good players that have been drafted that are on rookie contracts, right? A lot of our good players are players that we've basically bought at this point. Um, to me, the Raiders got to focus on defense. And there's some interesting prospects here. Um, between the corners, the safeties, the defensive linemen, uh, or I should I should have removed the interior guys because we already got our interior guy, right? Um, so everything on the defensive side minus the interior guys, there's some intriguing prospects here. Um, I think one of the things the Raiders haven't done in the past is they haven't gotten their linebacker, and that's what we're going to focus on right now. Uh, I think there's two really, really interesting players that the Raiders should consider. Uh, you'll see here... Um, Jack Campbell and Drew Sanders and Trenton Simpson. So you got the three top linebackers all basically available. Um, I'm not sure why Dane Henley is ranked so high. I'm not sure if uh, PFF thinks he's going to convert to like an, an edge rusher. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. Um, but to me, the Raiders got to get a linebacker. And I'm going to take Trenton Simpson out of Clemson. Uh, I think Simpson changes the Raiders defense because you're basically going to have a guy that can now at this point uh play on third downs right and keep in mind denzel perryman's not with the raiders anymore he went and signed i think with the texans um so the raiders got to get some linebackers that can play and i think trenton simpson's one of those guys that can absolutely ball i'm taking him if he's available um to me i think it's a no-brainer you you take you take the best linebacker you take the best deep to tackle you take the best guys available with the picks that you're obviously given uh, pick 70 is the Raiders' next pick, third round pick. Um, the Raiders could get a running back with a third round pick. Uh, there are, you know, if, if there's one position this, run, this class is very deep at, it is the running back position. Um, and to me, I think there's at least two to three really, really, really good backs. And I don't think these guys are actually going to be available where they're kind of being ranked. Um, one is Roshan Johnson. The Texas running back, a lot of people don't know who he is because he's backed up. But John Robinson, 
who is the number one running back in this class. Uh, this guy was the backup to him, but people say that, hey, if this guy went to LSU this year or if this guy went uh, to Alabama or, or whatever it is, he would have been arguably the second running back right after Bajon Robinson. Um, if Roshan Johnson is there with pick 70, if I'm the Las Vegas Raiders, I am taking him. Um, and I say that because the Raiders have to replace Josh Jacobs. I know people don't want to hear this because I've stated this before and people argue against this in the past. But the thing is, is you got to get cheap, right? You got to be cheap in certain positions. Um, you got to be cheap with your guards, right? There's no point of paying guards. Let's just be honest. When you pay a guard $20 million, you're making a massive mistake. It doesn't make sense to pay a guard. You can draft these guys. Um, you can find serviceable guards through free agency for 4 $5 million a year. It doesn't make sense. Um, and the same could be held true for running backs. It doesn't make sense to pay a running back. And I love Josh Jacobs. I think he's a great football player. But he's already about to be in his fifth year in the NFL. Running backs don't last very long. Um, Austin Eckler wants a contract. He's not going to get it. right? Because the Chargers realize the value of the running back position. Melvin Gordon wanted a contract. Chargers got rid of him. The Chargers are going to go out and find their next running back. Maybe it's in this class, right? Uh, to me, it doesn't make sense for the Raiders to pay Josh Jacobs. I know a lot of people don't want to hear it, but it is backed. There's no point of paying a running back when there's 10 running backs in this class alone that could start, right? Uh, plus, running backs very dependent on your offensive line and your run scheme. So for me, Josh McDaniels knows how to draw that up, right? Draw the run game up. So I'm going to draft Roshan Johnson. I think he's a game changer for the Raiders. And if you guys haven't watched this tape, go check it out. The guy's very, 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 very solid. With that being pick, uh, with that being said, pick 100 is one of the Raiders' compensatory picks. Third round pick, massive, 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 massive pick. Uh, pick 100 is, you know, in, in my opinion, having an extra pick where you're getting the hundredth overall pick that is game changer. I know some people that aren't into the draft may not realize it, but some of these guys right now that we see, I can guarantee you are going to be top tier players at their position. A, a guy here in North Carolina State, Chandler and Zavala, is going to be one of the best guards out of this class. Uh, he's going to be one of the best players in the NFL, right? Uh, and when I say best players at his position, you know, that's top 10 to 15 at his position in two to three years. Um, you got guys when you just go down this board like Wayna Morris, who has massive upside as a tackle. Sean Tucker, I can guarantee you, is going to be a very, very, very good football player. Juice Scruggs out of Penn State. I think he's going to be a solid football player. Andrew Voorhees, guard, solid football player. There's just so many guys down this list. And the thing is, is you know, most of us hear about Bryce Young and CJ Stroud and, you know, uh, Paris Johnson Jr. And most of us don't know some of these guys down the list. And to me, pick 100 is massive. Um, I think the Raiders got to, I think they got to fill the interior offensive line. And they need to look for a tackle. And I'm not saying let's draft the future starting right tackle. But I do think that we got to get some sort of guy with a little bit of upside, right, at this point. Um, Wayne Morris is an interesting prospect for me because uh, he doesn't get the same uh, love that the left tackle for Oklahoma gets. The left tackle from Oklahoma is Anton Harrison. He gets way more love, right? People are saying he's a first-round pick. But I don't know if Wayne Morris isn't better than him right uh and i do want to say this i think this class at the guard position is very deep it's specifically because i think there's some tackles are going to end up shifting over to guard um and there's obviously true guards as well um i'm gonna actually wait on the interior offensive line for the raiders um I think we can probably focus on the cornerback position at this point. Uh, maybe the safety position, although the Raiders did sign a safety and free agency in Marcus Epps. Um, maybe they get a cornerback out of this class. There's definitely a lot of corners. Um, expect the Raiders to honestly draft maybe two corners. Like I would not be surprised if they draft two corners out of this class. Um, corners, of course, are is one of those positions that's kind of hard to really hit on. Um, I do love Illinois' secondary players. Uh, Jartavius Martin is a guy that I'm very intrigued by. Um, I'm going to take him, actually. Uh, another guy that I do like is going to be the TCU Trebeus, uh Hodges Tomlinson. 
uh, nephew of Ladanian Tomlinson, if you guys didn't know. Uh, I do like him as well, but I do think he's more of a true slot corner, and I'm not sure if we need that at this point. Uh, he is on the shorter side as well. Um, I think the Raiders got to get a boundary corner. I, I think Nate Hobbs needs to go back to the inside, and the Raiders need to focus on the outside. With pick 100, I think a perfect fit for the Raiders would be a Jartavius Martin. Uh, he's one of those guys that's, at least in my opinion, he's one of those guys that's, uh, you know, he'll press a guy, he'll play man coverage, he's sticky in coverage. Uh, plus, Illinois has produced great defensive backs right Nate Hobbs as an example came from Illinois uh, this year alone right we got Devin Witherspoon from Illinois who some people say is a top corner um, they have two safeties as well Sidney Brown is likely going to be a second round pick this year uh, even the other safety that they have is going to get drafted this year so uh, I think Illinois has done a great job and you know if you guys don't know this Illinois had um, shoot who's the coach uh, Lovey Smith as their their head coach. The guy did a great job uh, bringing in talented defensive players, and now these guys are all getting into the NFL. They even got some solid front seven players too on the defense. So um, he did obviously did a hell of a job over there. But um, I like the cornerback pick here, uh, or with the last pick, pick one hundred nine is the Raiders' next pick. Um, I'm gonna get us a tackle at this point or if it's not a tackle i'm going to get us a guard a guy that could play guard right maybe a tackle um or we just get a true guard at this point um interesting that there's two guys here that the raiders are going to definitely consider you know pick 109 third round pick um the raiders should in my opinion get a guard at this point there's two guys right now that I can see off the list. Chandler Zavala out of North Carolina State uh, and Andrew Voorhees out of USC. Those are my two guards right now that I'm highly considering. Um, there's some other guys as well. Uh, Antonio Maffi. I don't see how this guy ends up being the 190th ranked player. The guy's, he's a monster football player, a massive uh, football player, powerful he fits the Raiders scheme perfectly. And if this guy somehow does go in the sixth or seventh round, the Raiders would be wise to draft him at that point. Um, Jarrett Patterson, another really good interior offensive lineman. A Ricky Stromberg, a center potentially for the Raiders. Uh, McClendon Curtis, another guard. Um, it's going to be interesting. I would go ahead and at this point take Chandler Zavala. Um, I think he is very powerful, very strong. Great reachability in the zone runs. Obviously, the Raiders are more of a powers team, so uh, we'll see what ends up happening. But I'm gonna go ahead and take a guard with this with that last pick. Um, so we got a D tackle, we got a linebacker, we got a corner. I don't think the Raiders need a safety, uh, and we got a running back as well. I, I don't think the Raiders need a safety at this point. I think what the Raiders should target at this point is gonna be a tight end. Um, assuming there's a good tight end available to go at pick 141 uh davis allen is ranked as the 140th tight end i have not watched this tape uh i watched the purdue tape of Payne durham durham this guy that i kind of like but i'm gonna go ahead and wait a little bit on that uh let's go ahead and just look down the list here um juice shrugs is a possible replacement for uh Arnold james i think the raiders have to consider it at this point um I'm not saying 100% let's get rid of him. I'm just saying we got to consider moving on from him. Um, the San Jose State edge rusher is an intriguing prospect here. Uh, the guy's a good pass rusher, but he is from San Jose State. So I don't know if you, you take a guy like that. Um, you got the Louisville defensive end. Uh, you got the linebacker out of Sacramento State, Marty Mopu. Uh, I don't know why he's listed as a safety. He's kind of lazy on their end on pffs in here um let's let's see if the raiders can get a safety anthony johnson's a, a interesting safety prospect um you know at this point you are in the fourth round i believe 141 uh fourth fifth round um gonna be an interesting pick because at this point i think you're really just getting guys that are like depth players right because you're not going to get starting caliber players like you could get lucky and you could hit on a guy uh, but that doesn't generally happen right um, I do like Kobe Turner's upside. The Raiders did draft two defensive linemen last year, so I don't see them, if they do take Clash Kansas with pick seven, I don't see them taking another interior defensive lineman. I, I think I could see them taking another linebacker at this point. 
Um, let's let's do it. Let's, let's take another linebacker. I, I think the Raiders do need to get some depth as well as to you know replacing De- uh, Denzel Perryman, who was a starter for the Raiders last year. Um, Ventro Miller is an interesting player. Uh, Aubrey Jackson Jr. I'm gonna take him. I, I know he's not ranked as high, but I think some of these rankings are off a little bit. I, I think with pick 141 in the fifth round, I think he is a guy that you know has a sh- chance to go that high. Um, if you guys haven't watched Aubrey Miller, go check his tape out. The guy is an interesting pro, uh, football player. Fast, quick, um, explosive as well, right? Can really play downhill in the run. Can also play do some good things in pass coverage. Um, fast, right? That, that's kind of what comes in mind when you look at Aubrey Miller. Uh, obviously, he was at Jackson State this past year, and, and he's going to play in the NFL. All right, he'll definitely play in the NFL. Um this one's interesting. Pick 144, fifth round. The Raiders got a lot of picks this year, man. Yeah, we got it. We got to crush. In my opinion, we got to crush this draft uh, because we have a lot of a lot of different picks. Uh, I'm gonna draft the uh, right tackle potential for the Raiders right now. Um, I know some people love Jermaine Illuminor. I do too. I think he's a he's a good football player. Uh, but does he have that long term? starting potential i don't know right i do like him for this year for sure but i need him to prove it this year that he is the long-term raiders tackle uh, i think the way he does that this year is gonna be he has to show improvements from last year uh, he was good when it came to uh pass blocking but sometimes he did give up ground right and i you know the quarterback needs to be able to sit there and and uh, be able to throw the ball uh fifth round um i think this is the the developmental side of it a little bit uh, i'm gonna take pittsburgh's carter warren if you guys have uh watched any of my mocks off my other channel you guys know he's a guy that i really 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 like when i watched uh believe it or not when i watched clemson's tape in 2021 i was watching miles murphy and i wanted to see how this guy looked and i came away saying that this guy sucks well what's why is this guy being projected as a first round pick and i li- i later realized that it was Carter Warren who was shutting this guy down, right? Carter Warren is, and here's the thing with this guy. He got hurt after four games this past year, missed the entirety of the season. And because of that, he's not being projected to go very high. Um, he wasn't able to finish the season. So there's not a lot of tape from the 2022 season, um, but he has massive upside. And for me, I'm going to take that upside in the fifth round. Keep in mind, he's a long-term, not long-term, but you know he'll sit for one year and we'll see what he can do in year two. Um, I do think that Thayer Munford has some upside as well, but I'm not as high on Munford. I, I think when you look at tackles, the one thing you can't be when you're a tackle is slow, right? And to me, Munford's too slow when he gets out of his stance and all that stuff. Uh, you got to have fast players, right? Um, so for that reason... I think the Raiders should get a guy like Carter Warren. He's quick, explosive, has massive upside. Um, could be a long-term tackle, right? Starting tackle in the NFL. Uh, pick 174, another compensatory pick for the Raiders. Um, at this point, I, I think one of the things the Raiders have to do is they got to get playmakers. Uh, we took a running back early in Roshan Johnson. Um, I believe it was a third round. I think the Raiders need to get even another weapon on the offensive side. And this guy is interesting. If you guys don't know who Keaton Mitchell is, go check out his tape. Uh, He played at East Carolina, so he didn't play against high competition. But the guy's very, very, very fast. Like, when you watch his tape, it's noticeable on tape. This guy has that, you know, there's guys that are fast in the NFL. And then there's guys that are just faster than those guys. And that's Keaton Mitchell. Um, he is a running, he is listed as a running back, but he can obviously line up in the slot. He can play a little bit of, you know, that, uh, he's a natural playmaker. Now, obviously we're going to take him in the fifth round. Don't be surprised if the chiefs end up taking this guy, like in the second or third round, and they turn this guy into one of the best playmakers in the NFL. Don't be surprised. So if he is there, the Raiders better lock him up. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think there's definitely some upside with him. Now, uh, I don't know what the hell is happening with this simulator, uh, but Anthony Johnson, who's ranked as the 69th prospect, is somehow still on the board. Uh, I'm not sure why, if that's a glitch. I, I find that hard to believe that you know there's some sort of glitch in here, but 
Um, if he's there, man, that's a safety prospect that could go as high as the third round, even higher. Some people, uh, I, I wouldn't say he's going to go in the second round. Even third round could be a stretch a little bit. I think the safety position is, is kind of devalued um, in terms of drafting, right? You don't take, you know, most years, the number one safety in the class doesn't go in the first round, right? Because the safety position is kind of devalued. Um, but in round five, or I'm sorry, round six at this point, I'm going to take Anthony Johnson. Uh, I think he's an interesting prospect, you know, nonetheless. Um, I'm going to switch here and look at the tight ends. I, I think the Raiders got to get a tight end this year. Um, you know, you don't need, you know, we don't need the next pass catching tight end, but we do need a guy that can come in and block. Um, we have Austin Hooper. I think that'll do everything we need in terms of like catching and stuff like that. Um, we have another tight end that I think could come in and do some good things. Um, our backup tight end we just picked up as well. I don't know if he's going to necessarily provide that pass catching ability. Um, but I do like the Penn State tight end here, Brenton Strange. Um, I do like the North Dakota State tight end as well. Uh, I'm going to actually just wait, man. I, at this point, I don't know if, if I like any of those tight ends as much. Um, let's see if there's any receivers that I would possibly take with this pick. That's interesting because a lot of these guys have no idea who these guys are. I mean, that's kind of what happens to get down into uh, pick six. Um, and I say that not knowing who those guys are that are like receiver safeties and stuff like that. Um, coming down this list, you know, you look at the interior offensive linemen and tackles, I can tell you who all of these guys are right because i've watched all of these guys um, i don't think jake witt even came out this year i don't know if he's actually truly available um but you know a guy like uh brett and uh, neilon some people are saying he's gonna be a very good football player and he if he's there at this point um the raiders should consider that now obviously we've already taken a couple of offensive linemen uh, Jerome Carvin's an interesting player. Uh, Tashawn Manning's an interesting, massive player. A great scheme fit for the Raiders. Um, I'm going to not take an offensive lineman at this point. Um, let's see if the Raiders could get a quarterback to develop. Um, you're at pick six, or I mean, round six, pick 37 in round six. Um, I like taking Max Duggan to potentially develop, right? Well, why not? I think Josh Daniels does like to develop some guys. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take him at this point. Um, some interesting players available, some good edge. I don't think we took an edge player in this class, in, in the draft. Let's let's look at some of these guys. Um, Lonnie uh, Phelps here, interesting player. I think he was, uh, he had like an insane amount of sacks this past year. Uh, kind of an interesting player. MJ Anderson, opposite of Will McDonald. Uh, pretty interesting player. I'm going to take him. Uh, I think there's some upside with him. Let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what the grade is that PFF's going to give us. Uh, final pick for the Raiders. I'm going to I'm gonna just take an interior offensive lineman. Uh, I'm going to take a guy who I think has upside. Um at the offensive line position. Uh, let me go to offense tackle and see if he's available. I'm gonna take tackle Dalton Wagner. Uh, you know, I, I know the, the grade on this isn't gonna be nice, but um, right tackle Dalton Wagner at Arkansas is an interesting player. Physical, tough, nasty. Uh, one of the interesting things is you know, last year, Trevor Penning went super high because he bullied people. Um, this year, we don't get that same uh, same type of hype with a guy like Dalton Wagner, right? Which is interesting because this guy did it at Arkansas playing in some of the top tier teams. Um, and Arkansas had a damn good offensive line, like legit ass offensive line. So uh, you guys can obviously see the grades here by PFF. Uh, do they agree with my Kalijah Kansi pick? Obviously not. Uh, they don't agree with my Trenton Simpson pick or my Roshan Johnson pick. I mean, they don't agree with half my picks, right? Uh, but I don't really care, right? PFF's mock, or, uh, PFF's rankings kind of suck, let's be honest. Uh, but I do think that if the Raiders took these guys right here, right? Like if the Raiders truly drafted the guys right here, um, long term, our team's going to be better. All right? I think we get at least three to four starters right away. 
Uh, you get Kalijah Kansi to start. You get Trenton Simpson to start. Roshan Johnson will take over for Josh Jacobs. And I think Jatavius Martin has upside. Um, even Chandler Zavala, like I, in my opinion, the first five picks here are starters for the Raiders. And that's kind of sad, to be honest, because we've, we've kind of stopped that drafting. All right. And then I think the bottom six guys give the Raiders upside. Um, you know, maybe Josh Daniels develops uh, Max Duggan. Um, maybe Patrick Graham gets something out of Anthony Johnson, who somehow was available in round six. Either way, I hope you guys enjoy this mock draft. I do want to challenge you guys into uh, giving me your guys' two to three sleeper players. Let me know who they are in the comments below. Uh, let me know who your guys' guys are. Uh, generally speaking, you know, I, I don't get into draft as much on this channel anymore. I started a second channel to fully cover the draft, and I still plan to post on that channel. Uh, but there's not a whole lot of news at this point. It's just rumors and stuff like that. Uh, so I did want to do something a little bit differently. So I hope you guys uh, did enjoy it. And let me know what you guys think about these guys. Like, have you guys watched any of these guys? Do you guys agree, disagree? Let me know in the comments below. Thumbs up, subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.